Class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we're discussing game 55 of the regular season between the San Jose Sharks and the Pittsburgh Penguins, in which the Sharks have lost 3-1. to one. So the Penguins get revenge for the loss suffered at the hands of the San Jose Sharks just a few weeks ago, but generally, this was actually a pretty well-played game by San Jose. It was just a couple of days ago when the Sharks faced off against the Washington Capitals, where I pointed out how that was one of their better performances of the entire season. This Penguins game, while technically slightly below that Capitals performance was still right up there and even though this ended up being a loss uh, the Sharks can I guess especially in a, a just kind of scrapped season can take solace in the fact that they played a pretty strong game here tonight especially on top of that when you look at the two goals that the Penguins actually did score here tonight so let's start off with this first one coming in that first period the Penguins would take a 1-0 lead off of a Ricard Raquel goal and this one relatively controversial however the Sharks didn't even take the opportunity to try and get the coach's challenge on this. What happens is that Raquel is skating through the crease and he gets a light shove from Eric Carlson from behind, which causes him to sort of have his skate crash into the pad of Aaron Dell, causes Dell to spin, and he's completely out of it for the incoming shot from that very same player, Ricard Raquel. And it, it really felt as though a very obvious challenge. I didn't necessarily think 100% chance it would come back because of that light shove from Carlson, but there was definitely some like good odds that it would, and early on in the game, when it's like not completely the end of the world if you're down 1-0 and then go on a penalty kill for the next two minutes, I think it would have been a fine challenge to do, but David Quinn decides against it for whatever reason, and as such, the Sharks find themselves in that hole rather early on. Then in the second period, we have our second controversial goal, but this one not because of a goal interference or some sort of missed challenge but instead from a missed penalty call which was a big theme here tonight for the officials here tonight against uh, between these two teams and primarily against the San Jose Sharks Logan Couture gets an extremely obvious high stick from Jake Gensel right in front of the Sharks net and because of this Couture drops to the ice and that allows Gensel to be open for the incoming Sidney Crosby pass from behind the net and allows Gensel to score so this first goal Ricard Raquel interferes with Arundel and then benefits from it by scoring and then Gensel high sticks Couture and benefits from it by scoring. So just two goals from the Penguin side that would, you know, honestly make me upset in a season that actually mattered more for the San Jose Sharks, but in the end, I guess it technically does not matter. Up until this point, however, even through these couple of goals that the Penguins scored, the Sharks were actually playing decent hockey. Unfortunately, they just couldn't seem to buy a bounce. DeSmith was playing very well, and in the times where he wasn't playing very well, he got bailed out and even somewhat lucky at times. In the third period, eventually Timo Meyer would manage to score his 34th 31st of the season to bring this game to within one but then a very weird situation occurs in the last couple of minutes of this game so the Sharks actually get possession of the puck with about a hundred seconds to go in the third period minute 40 a minute 30 left and for whatever reason David Quinton does not decide to pull Arundel at that point and eventually the puck gets cleared out of the zone and the Sharks are then struggling to re-enter to be able to then pull the goaltender they eventually manage to send the puck into the Penguin zone with about 45 seconds left and then David Quinn with no other choice at this point decides to pull Dell there but there's no possession for San Jose at that point the Penguins just pick up the puck and end up moving it down the ice for the empty net goal I felt as though there was definitely the opportunity about a minute earlier if not you could even go before that I don't know there's no rule that you have to pull your goaltender with less than two minutes to go the Sharks definitely could have gotten Arundel out of the net and given them a chance especially with the amount of time uh, the amount that they were pushing in this third period period to be able to get the game tying goal but David Quinn makes a bit of an awkward call same with how he made this very same awkward a very similar type of awkward call early on when not challenging the Ricard Raquel goal I wouldn't say that this was David Quinn's best game as a San Jose Sharks head coach but that Moving on now to the players to talk about, we have the first line of Benino, Hurtle, and Meyer. And in the game against the Washington Capitals, I talked about how relative to the rest of the team's usual performance, the first line was probably the Sharks' worst line. Here tonight, it completely flips on this on its head, and this was definitely the Sharks' best line. And obviously, the player to stand out here is, of course, Timo Meyer, the current San Jose Shark, but who knows what will indeed happen in the future with him and what team he may or may not end up getting 
been traded to and he put on an absolute clinic here tonight he would not be denied obviously he scores the only goal for the San Jose Sharks off of a very strong power move which is like the absolute like exhibit a that you will show other teams looking to acquire him about what he can technically bring to your team but he had multiple amazing chances earlier on a couple of very nice setup plays with eric carlson that just ends up being a save by casey de smith so while he only ended up with the one goal here tonight the sharks only goal the sharks only point actually he probably could have had at least a couple tonight on top of that, his line mate Hurdle, while I think a step below and certainly benefited from Meyer absolutely dominating here, I thought he was also quite good. And Benino, who was really the weak link of the San Jose Sharks top line, unsurprisingly, in that game against the Washington Capitals, certainly brought his play up at least a bit and was pretty good here tonight. On the second line, we of course have AC Montcouture and Barabanov. Really, this was a, a top six lead night for for the San Jose Sharks. This line was very good against Washington. They were once again quite solid. Uh, I will highlight obviously Barabanov continuing to play very very well. He's kind of looked hot as of late but also Couture in his 900th regular season game of his career played very very strong. Probably could have had a goal or two here tonight with a bit of better bounces. I will say it seems as though maybe the Acemont honeymoon has run out. He was picked up off of waivers a few weeks ago. Was Put into the lineup relatively quickly, missed a couple of games, but then got inserted in and was very, very good, even up in the top six, even onto the top line. But as of late, over these last couple of games, it seems he has fallen off. I'm sure he has built up enough sort of good karma with... Uh, David Quinn that he's going to be able to remain especially since there really aren't any better options to come into the top six but at the moment AC Mont seems to be lagging behind his two line mates. When it comes to the third line it's not really that much of a surprise that they weren't able to keep up the amazing performance that they had the other night against the Washington Capitals but this was still a very Noah Gregor type line here tonight. What I mean by that is that they had multiple chances off the rush. Just in the first period I believe they had a two on one and then a three on one which unfortunately they allowed Noah Gregor to be the one to shoot on that three on one so it of course did not result in a goal because no one Gregor cannot score a goal it's actually written in the ten uh, in the NHL rule book that Noah Gregor is not actually allowed to score any goals especially off of the rush and so that's the unfortunate situation there but otherwise this third line while not amazing they got their chances and that's what you're I mean Sometimes you go for like a third line that you want to be a bit more defensive, but this third line is definitely more leaning on the offensive side of things, and they did okay. Then, of course, we have the fourth line, and we did have a substitution. Finally, Kevin LeBanc returns to the lineup, but not because David Quinn finally wanted to get him back in, but because Jonah Gajevich ends up being injured and heading on to the injured reserve. And so David Quinn, his hand was forced, and he had to play his 25-point player over a 5-point player, and... Yeah, LeBanc barely actually got to play. He had the least ice time on the entire team here tonight with less than six minutes. I believe in the latter half of this game, he got about one shift, which came with like four minutes left in the third period where he played about a 45 second shift. Otherwise, he barely, if ever, played. And I thought LeBanc in the very, very, very few shifts he actually did have didn't look terrible. I thought there were like a couple of like not good plays where you're thinking like oh wow he almost scored there but he was doing like the little things correctly he's getting into some battles along the boards he's finishing his checks he's making decent defensive reads I thought he had an okay game here tonight especially just being thrust back into the lineup after multiple healthy scratch games and playing with two players he basically never plays with on the fourth line with Sveshnikov and uh, Lorenz but unfortunately David Quinn at the uh, sort of post-game press conference if you can call it that said that oh he didn't like the performance of that fourth line so it seems as though LeBanc will return to the doghouse it is even technically possible I honestly wouldn't put it past David Quinn that the Sharks end up calling up like Jeff VL to fill into this fourth line role and just have LeBanc once again return to healthy scratch it just completely baffles the mind about what exactly is the situation here I mean there have been literally dozens of games thus far this season in which Jonah Gadjevich was even more so invisible than LeBanc and with actually more ice time but I guess because Jonah Gadjevich decides to punch some people in the face every once in a while that gets him a pass to play like half the season if not more at this point so 
Kevin LeBanc, I thought he played half decent in the role that he was put into, but I'm not the coach of the San Jose Sharks. On the defensive side of things, the Sharks actually played pretty decently. The only line that they really had issues with tonight from a Pittsburgh Penguins perspective was Sidney Crosby. And of course, there have been, Sidney Crosby's been in the league for like almost two decades at this point, and so it is certainly no stranger to the fact that teams have trouble with whatever line Sidney Crosby has to be on. But when it came to the other lines that of the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Sharks did a pretty good job at locking those things down. It was really only Crosby, Gensel, Raquel, that trio. That gave the Sharks some pause, but otherwise, I thought it was a pretty good game for many of the Sharks defensemen. The only one who I thought kind of looked rather weak was Jacob McDonald, who I've been not really appreciating his game over these past few games. With Shemek continuing to be injured, it seems as though he might come back relatively soon but I'm not entirely sure and Nick Chichek really not being that much of a better option it seems as though McDonald will continue to be this sixth defenseman for the San Jose Sharks but he's just not particularly good at it at least at this point point. and then finally we have the goaltender Aaron Dell who wasn't necessarily tasked with making a ton of saves but there were multiple very nice saves that he did make uh, as I mentioned earlier the Sharks had issues with the Crosby line and that Crosby line I think had two or three odd man rushes that Aaron Dell managed to make the saves on each and every time and this first goal he had absolutely no chance on because he was interfered with with uh, by Raquel and on the second goal you can't really fault him with because Gensel should have been covered in front by one of the Sharks players except that Sharks player was high sticked in the face and so Dell a very very solid game for him I suspect Kakinen at least that's what David Quinn says he will be back for the next game on Thursday but and I also expect that Kaknin will end up starting that game, but Dell seems like a very capable backup, at least with this game, certainly stands out in a positive light. But that will do it for this review. The Sharks will be back in action on Thursday, where they will take on the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, a team that, of course, has been a, I can't really say long-time rival because they've only been in the league for a few years, but of course, there is a lot of bad blood between those two teams, not so much anymore since that has really cooled down since the Sharks have been very bad for the last few seasons, but it's always nice to try and take it to the Golden Knights, and we'll see if the Sharks can do that. Class dismissed.